Hi, electrostatic discharge or ESD is an electrical charge that is stored in something like human body and can jump to devices like laptops and cell phones and damage them. Here's a 25 kilovolt discharge to a grounded box. The tip of the gun here simulates a human finger. Always be careful with your tools. Now, they usually zap a completely assembled unit. But sometimes it's also beneficial to zap a bare board like this one and see what happens on the actual board. Never hold the board you're zapping with your hand because the ESD will jump to your body through the board. But if I disconnect the ground wire, it will only jump a few times. Because now the board is charged to the same level as the gun and it doesn't jump anymore. Always discharge the charge board before touching it. Some friends ask, isn't it the electrical current that kills you? Well, yes, but the voltage needs to be high enough to generate enough current. It's charged more than 40 volts, you can see on the meter. But right now I'm touching the wires and I can't even feel it because the voltage is not high enough. Who's this? No, I'm not Steve. Wrong number. Today I decided to go with a smaller and a lower power circuit, like a blinker. If I turn on the power supply, <laughs> it starts blinking. There is a capacitor on this circuit that's responsible for the timing. And you can see a tiny negative sign beside it. That means that that side needs to be connected to ground or negative. Uh, yeah! I'm going to run an electrohydraulic system of this car battery for you. I'm going to run an electrohydraulic system of this car battery for you. I just tighten these nuts here. Always be careful not to short your car battery. Now I connected these cables to the battery and all I want to do is to pass them under. The if I can just pass these cables under the table here. Always finish your wiring before connecting to your power supply. Now I enable the power supply. Always double check your connections. Hi, today I'm going to talk about building a gun. Oh, I know what you're thinking about. Stop making stereotype comments. The best weapon we can get in our country is a kitchen knife. While in countries like US, you can get any type of weapon you like. And with all the shooting and killing in your countries, you shouldn't really call me names. And stop making fun of my eyebrows, because... According to your gun-loving people, it's not guns that kill people, it's people that kill people. So all I'm doing is teaching you how to build a gun, and it's your duty to shoot each other. So, don't. The gun I'm going to talk about runs purely on electricity, no fossil fuels, no harmful pollutants, you may even call it a green gun. So next time when you shoot somebody, you may feel a little bit better knowing that you've done something good for the planet. I can see more than one way. Let me show you what I mean by this oscillation. If I put the bullet inside the coil and try to turn it on with my power supply here. Well, it's always safer not to work with live loose wire so instead I'm using this alligator clips here there you go you saw what happened oh. always make sure the wire gauge can handle the high current you can see the oscillation I was talking about here so say hello to my little friend here I put the circuit together and I'm gonna shoot the box I put the bullet in and there's a switch here that acts like a trigger so here we go well, it's always wise to aim away from yourself. Okay, let's see if we can figure out how fast the bullet goes. Well, the circuit blew up, but I measured the speed to be close to 25 kilometers an hour or 16 miles an hour. Thanks for watching. Hi, today I'm going to talk about fixing digital cameras, such as this one. Now let's take a look at the camera here. And you can see the lens here, and if I remove the lens, 
you'll see the giant flash capacitor back here. Ow! F piece of sh Apparently the flash capacitor is holding around 300 volts of charge in it and it can hurt a lot if you touch it. So I recommend you discharge this capacitor before working on the camera. It's not the best way to do it, but I'm gonna short the capacitor with a wire. Steady. Steady. It's okay, it's safe now. So really, a few simple steps and then you put your camera back together and it's guaranteed to work for many years to come. Hi, one of the common questions is that what kind of electricity hurts more? AC alternating current or DC direct current? So I'm going to measure the electricity pain level on a human's body, which is myself. As I mentioned in my other video, a power supply like this one that can generate 70 amps doesn't necessarily hurt you at all if the voltage is set very low. Observe. No! <laughs> Who the hell set this to 25 volts? Before using a power supply, always make sure its level is set properly. Uh, yeah, I would say around 9 volt, it feels like torture. Although if you want to torture someone and make them talk, you probably don't want to hurt their tongue. And besides, you should never torture each other. Always remember, people in the first world countries never torture anybody. They always hire the third world countries to do the job. Unless, of course, if you're married. But before that, let me show you something. I've set the signal generator to 5 Hz, 7 volt RMS. Let me change the frequency now. Nice. By the way, I can do this too. Now let's reduce the voltage level and increase the frequency all the way to 60 Hz. I shock my ass sitting on these live wires. Always clean up the lab, otherwise something will bite you in the ass. So it was confirmed. According to my sensors, the AC hertz at RMS levels half of the DC level. Anything for science. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it.